Hello, everybody. Uh, nice Hello. to see you all. Pretty more of you can't be here in the hall, but never mind, eh? We've got to cope with what we've got. Anyway. Now, my purpose today is to do this part of the back. Um, this part of the back is actually the broch, which is a circular building. Um, and there is in the picture just the faint hint of being able to see inside on this part here. And this is the entrance here, which is somewhat cluttered. Um, so I'll, I'll do what I can with it. So my purpose now is to do this and then do whatever is needed to the rest of the picture eventually when I've done that to pull it all together. I'm hoping to finish it this, um, this time. Now, I want the colour to be a bit darker, so I'm going to add some blue to the purpley colour I've got. And then, because it's further away, I want to dull it down, so I'm adding a bit of the burnt sienna as well. That gives me that sort of colour, which is a, a sort of muddy purple colour. Might put a bit more blue in that. That's a bit better. Right, so I've got it a dirty bluey purple. And I'm going to start to work on this area here. Now at the moment we've got this very light, this mid-tone, and now the additions of this will, will darken it off. I'm going to miss out the people. There's a couple of people there. He's got light pants on. And there's a notice board there. And there's somebody there and there's somebody there. I'm just going to miss the people out. Uh, I don't think they will add to the picture at all. And I'm trying to decide whether to wear my glasses or not. <laughs> Cure me both. <laughs> oh, no. That doesn't work. Right, okay, we'll try with that. Okay, so I've got a small brush here and I'm going to try to put in the shadow to make this look more like a curl. Um, on the other hand, I do want to put in the shadow that's there. Because um, otherwise we will be, uh, I'll be, I'll be making it up. I don't want to be doing that. That's not, uh, not good practice. I think I've actually got that in the wrong place. So I'll blot it out. Not very well. Add a bit of water. Spread it about a bit. Uh, I've got my little scrubbing brush to take it down because it's grabbed the surface very seriously. Right. Now, because I made a mistake there, I can't go back to that dry. So we'll leave that bit alone and see what we can do over here. I'll take some of the, the paint and look to see what I can find over here. Um, there is a person, but that person is adding to the perspective. So I'm not going to put the person in, but I'm going to put in the perspective they have created, which is very kind of them. And then this has also got a shadow on it. Right, and then there is a Step of darkness there. I might have to make this even darker when I get the opportunity. 
but at least um, by doing it this way, I'm getting them in more or less the right place. Now we're going to run into trouble here. That is going to. Oh, it hasn't just behaved. How nice of it. Right, now this comes across here like that. And we have a slightly paler dark area there, which helps to define this wall here. This wall goes off at a tangent, which again is giving us some small feeling of perspective, which is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for areas that are going to improve the perspective of the painting. This area here is, is dark, but it's not as dark as that bit over there. So I have to go back to that. And this dark area is defining this wall in front. There's a little bit there. Just a matter of trying to see what is there and, and putting it in as best as is possible. Now this area here is a bit darker than, than this. That defines that. And then we come here with another area. Which is a little bit paler than that, so I'll take that back a bit, trying to keep the line long to help define this. If I go over here and try to sort out things a bit more here. That's that. And we have a sort of area here, which comes to there. There are big lines. Now I have got the edge of the broch and the hills more or less the same colour, which is not a good sort. I'll have to do something about that. This is a problem of half planning something, isn't it? However, I do have at the bitter end, so to speak, I can use some white paint. Um, I've been looking at it and I'm thinking I'll be using the Chinese white, which is not quite so covering as uh, the titanium white or designer gouache. And these need to be, these need to be really dark. Now, if you want to be really dark, that is more paint in the mix and less uh, less water. And this is really dark here. Yeah. 
This, this is where the inside of the broch is. There are all places where you do want straight lines. Um, which that's the way the rock splits. So you've got to make allowances for that. Right. Now, by comparison, this has gone much too pale. Uh, it's exercising. Making it darker, but not too dark, and allowing it to dry lighter, and oh dear me. So it's fun to do. And there are some marks over here. Those are quite quite dark bits over here. Two got to allow for the light on the top of that rock. This is in shadow. And then there's another one there. I don't want to get too involved over here. This is a good way out now. This is merely just dressing things to um, leave something that's not a blank space. Right. See how much lighter it dries, actually. You think you've put in something really dark and it turns out to be not the case by the time you, you get back to it. Right, now. And of course, the further away you get, the closer these lines will be to each other, because they, um, it's how the perspective makes them look. Because that's the bit where the people are. I'm not quite sure what's there. So we'll take a bit from somewhere else and do what they've done there. Now, these areas up here just look a bit like a mound of earth, and they're not, there's still those blocks of stone. Creating the shape. And down here, of course, as well.
Some of these will be darker. Here. What is going on there? That is quite a dark area there. Which helps to define this. Right. Now the contrast here is much too definite, so I'm just going to run some water over there to see if I can calm that down a little bit. Because this far back, the, the light is not um, going to shine on top of the, the blocks in quite the same way. And I need to do something here with the grass because that is much too um, strongly colored. It's much too, uh, much too light. This back here, um, now th this is a green that I'm using. Just, just bringing it down so that it joins through this bit here. But we could probably darken that a bit in places, couldn't we? And again, if you don't want a sharp edge, just, just run a wet brush over the edge of it. Bring it there. You find that quite nicely. And I think I could introduce, there are gorse bushes in among all this lot occasionally. So if I bring a bit of that green in over here, I can't really see what's happening. But it just helps to um, add a bit of something to it. Right. Right, time to, to sit back and think how I want to go about this. I think this is still a bit too light there. So I'll just go over it a bit with a, a slightly darker wash. It, it was st it's still a little bit... Um, fighting with this here because it's just that little bit too light. Now I've stopped looking at that now. I'm looking at this to see what I need to do to make this do what I want it to do. See if I can win for once. No, if I look, how much time have I got, Richard? Um, it hasn't been for 10 minutes. Right, okay. Right, that's the opaque white. This, this that I've got here is Chinese white. Now, Chinese white, if I can get it open. Chinese white doesn't cover as well as the Tatum, so it, it gives you a paler aspect by shading the 
paint underneath a little bit lighter. It draws a veil over it. That's why it's very good for neck curtains. If you want to do neck curtains blowing in the breeze, uh, you can add a little bit of um, Chinese white. And it, it just veils the color underneath without actually um, taking it out completely. I'm just send these back if you can. Try not to cover huge areas. This that I'm doing here is about the biggest area, really, that you ought to be playing with. Um, putting white on watercolor. It's better if you can do without it. Technically speaking, if you use Chinese white or gouache, you should call it a gouache, not a watercolor. But, um, you know, we do these things, don't we? Right, now this I want to come out a bit more here. That one's all right. This was the other one. Here. The other thing is, don't go back over the area that you've just put your Chinese white or um, titanium white on with watercolor because you just produce mud. The last area, the last thing that you do to an area, if you need to do it at all, is to put the Chinese white on. I think that's beginning to, to show. This could come back a little bit more. I might have to let that dry before I do any more to it. It's beginning to show that this shoulder is forward. I don't want to go into that area with paint yet. Um, I think I'm still a bit concerned about the broch here. Still, got, it's got, still got too much contrast there. Casting occasional glances at my photo to see what would help to bring about a convincing uh, narrative. But I'm not slavishly copying it now. I think that's not bad at all. I'm quite pleased with that. I think that's worked very nicely. There's a bit up here which is indecisive, which doesn't so show on your picture, but I can see it. It looks like it can't make up its mind whether it's sky or broch. So I think I need to make up its mind for it. I'll just make sure it realises it's part of the broch. Oh, I've been a little bit dramatic there, so. Much better. So the brock is actually pushed quite a way back now. The little bit of Chinese white I put on has rescued these. It's given me that curve that comes around here to suggest that this is actually a curved area. I've lost the line there, but I'm not going to worry about it. It's gone, so it's gone. And these really come forward, which I think is what I want to happen. The area over here where I put the Chinese white is working quite nicely now. A little bit, a little bit more on the sea. There we are. 
Great. I think I'll accept that as the finished article. So I finished a bit sooner than I thought I would today. You finished about the 10 minutes. Did I? On the 10 minutes. Right. Well, I want to talk a little bit about next week. Um, next week we'll be doing a different picture. I haven't brought it with me to show you because I didn't know how I was going to be getting on with this. It's actually a picture of what used to be called Ayers Rock, Uluru. Um, and I've chosen it deliberately because it's one of those paintings that you need to do painting wet in wet. So we'll paint the actual rock itself in one colour and then you introduce a very deep shadow into it while the paint is wet uh, to, to produce the indentation. Contrasts, because the light is so strong, are absolutely amazing. So the rock is a sort of pinky brown and the shadows are a deep, deep dark blue, which is very attractive. The thing about it is you've got to put it in at the right time. And this is what the exercise will be all about. So you might find you have to paint the darn thing three or four times to, <laughs> to get it right. It's a very simple shape, so it's not going to cause you any problems with, with the actual drawing. Uh, but it will, um, I think, help you to, um, to work wet in wet effectively. Because in fact, it's the only way of doing this. The only other way of painting the picture would be to use pastels. Uh, and I'm sticking with watercolour to the end of the term.